is DC's The Authority. This is Nerdist Now. Earlier this week, James Gunn, aka Jimmy Pew Pew, the new co-CEO of DC Studios, took to Twitter, as he's wont to do, to announce the next slate of DC film and television projects that they'll roll out over the next several years. And everyone on the internet was super chill and understanding, as usual. The project announcement was filled with some familiar hero names, like your Batmans, your Supermans, your Greens Lanterns. It also featured some not-so-well-known characters, like the Creature Commandos, Booster Gold, though we love him and his goofy blonde face, and the subject of today's video, the authority. We're going to talk about the origins, the members, and maybe some theories relating to the superhero team of the late 90s, but if you want to read more about it, Eric Diaz has you covered over on Nerdist.com. Not sure if we're able to really spoil a comic book that's been around since Jonathan Taylor Thomas was popular, but we're going to throw up a very tepid spoiler warning in case you wanted to know absolutely nothing about these brutal harbingers of justice. Get out of here and go watch the weird JTT Pinocchio movie or something. Still here? Of course you are, why wouldn't you be? You clicked the video! Although it's more of a cult hit, The Authority has had some of comics' biggest names working on it over the past 25 years, and it helped create the template for harder-edged comics like The Boys and Invincible. The Authority was first published in 1999 as part of DC's Wildstorm imprint. Wildstorm was superstar artist Jim Lee's label under the Image Comics banner. And look, we love Image Comics, but we should mention that at the time they were notorious for copying more popular comic book characters wholesale. Just look at Youngblood. Back in 1992, Lee created the hit series Wildcats, as well as its spin-off title Stormwatch. It was in the pages of Stormwatch that the Authority was really born. Many of the characters later made famous by the Authority were created for Stormwatch long before DC Comics was even in the picture. Stormwatch were super-powered heroes who answered to the UN, as many DC and Marvel teams historically did. They debuted in 1993, but by the late 90s, their style of superhero comics was going out of fashion. Like big hats and blossom. That's the last of the 90s references, I promise. This time. Writer Warren Ellis took over the series in 1997 and was given carte blanche over the dying title. He introduced several new characters like Jenny Sparks and Jock Hawksmoor. A year later, he basically killed off all the members of Stormwatch he didn't create in the Wildcats Aliens crossover. Yes, those aliens. The Xenomorphs from the Alien franchise almost killed off an entire superhero team, which ultimately led to the creation of The Authority. The Authority, made up of the remnants of Stormwatch, was a mashup of DC's Justice League and Marvel's Avengers. Like the Justice League, there were seven core members. Apollo and Midnighter were the counterparts to Superman and Batman, respectively, only they were a committed gay couple. They also have dope nicknames. Knight's Bringer of War is a great band name. Both were genetically engineered, with Apollo having powers nearly identical to Superman, and like him, draws power from the sun. Midnighter can predict any move in a fight, making him the ultimate hand-to-hand -hand combatant, similar to the Cape Crusader. But unlike Batman, Midnighter has a rapid healing ability thanks to his genetic engineering. So he doesn't have to rehab in an underground prison because Tom Hardy broke his back. Get bullied, rich boy. Oh, your money! <laughs> Apollo and Midnighter would instantly prove to be the most popular and most attention-getting members of the team, which also consisted of Swift, who was a winged warrior and an analog to DC's Hawkgirl, the Doctor was a mystical and even trippier version of Doctor Strange, the Engineer was a bit of Iron Man with a side of Colossus, Jack Hawksmoor was probably the only truly unique member, as he was a character who drew his strength and power from the energy of different cities. The team's leader, Jenny Sparks, was an edgier version of Captain Britain with electrical powers that allow her to even take the form of electricity. The Authority's base is a helicarrier called the Carrier. Simple, to the point, I like it. But their ship is capable of moving through the Bleed, which is the red space which separates alternate universes. The Bleed would later become a big part of DC's multiversal mythology, one of the series' big contributions to overall DC lore, and will probably play a big part in the upcoming film. Although their goals were noble, they took the law into their own hands and didn't allow things like international law or innocent until proven guilty to impede their brutal version of justice. A version of justice that saw them invading sovereign nations and crushing the skulls of corrupt leaders. In fact, they eventually set themselves up as the rulers of the United States. After Warren Ellis left the comic, a series of writers who would all become the biggest names in modern comics followed. Mark Millar, Ed Brubaker, Dan Abnett, and Andy Lanning, to name just a few. Artists like All-Star Superman's Frank Quitely and The Ultimate's Brian Hitch also made a name for themselves thanks to this series. 
Its gritty, violent, no-holds-barred take on superheroes has left an imprint on so many comics that would come after it. Even the kid-friendly animated Justice League took inspiration from the Authority. In the episode A Better World, the alternate Earth Justice Lords, who were a Justice League that took over the world, drew direct inspiration from the Authority. There were many ways in which the Authority set the tone for many of the 21st century's best superhero tales, many that received more recognition, to the point that the Authority was almost lost in obscurity. In Action Comics number 775, writer Joe Kelly introduced The Elite, a thinly veiled riff on the authority. He designed the Superman story to pose the question, could Superman's moral code and no killing rule exist in the world with superheroes like the authority? The leader of the elite, Manchester Black, cool name, was a clear combination of the authorities Jenny Sparks and Jack Hawksmore at least from a wardrobe perspective. The only person who dressed like that before Jenny Sparks was Ginger Spice. Okay, I promise, that, that is the last 90s reference. The Elite became a regular part of the DC Universe, even ending up on the CW Supergirl for a time. Was there even a need for the Authority anymore with the Elite around? By the end of the 2000s, the Authority's days seemed to be over. Its imitators had eclipsed it, but you can't keep a good, bad superhero team down forever. DC folded its Wildstorm titles into the DC Universe in 2011's The New 52 reboot. Many Authority characters made the transition, but the Authority itself, at least as a title, did not. They were essentially replaced with the returning Stormwatch series. Solo titles for characters like Midnighter and Apollo were released, but no book called The Authority for 10 years. Can you even imagine? There was no team going by that name until 2021. Scottish space wizard Grant Morrison, who briefly wrote the old Wildstorm title, wrote a new series called Superman and the Authority. In this version, Kal-El secretly created the Authority as a team when he began to lose his powers. As part of this new team, Superman recruited Manchester Black, the character that was created as a riff on original Authority leader Jenny Sparks. Not really a surprising move for Morrison. They put themselves in the Invisibles and then removed themselves after the comic Avatar became ill. Grant then included favorite Authority characters like Apollo and Midnighter. However, several new members were classic DC Universe stand-ins for characters in the original lineup, like replacing the Doctor with Enchantress and Steel for the Engineer. Which, we're talking about the comic book character, not the 1997 Shaquille O'Neal film, so not a reference, even though the character was introduced in the 90s, but we're not gonna... This is 2021, man! It's not too out there to say the authority changed the shape of the comics industry, and by extension, Hollywood. The characters might not be household names, but the impact of the gritty superhero is prevalent in film and TV now more than ever. The Boys is one of the most popular shows around, and Midnighter violently power walked so Butcher could run. It's hard to say what comic arcs Jimmy Six Shooter and company are going to look for for inspiration, but there's over 25 years of groundbreaking stories to draw from. But tell us, what do you think? Are you excited for the changes coming to the DC Cinematic World? Should we do a video on The Invisibles? And who is the most 90s comic book character of all time? It's Grifter. The answer is Grifter. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.